Hey everybody, it's Matt Haynes, and uh, I was just thinking about how sometimes it can be really hard to get started with uh, some new work. And uh, so I got this uh, video where I'm going to take you with me and get some painting started, and I hope you enjoy it. I realized the other day that I was feeling a little stuck. Um, I didn't want to get started with painting. And I was finding excuses not to go out and paint. And I realized that this is something a lot of artists experience. And so I, uh, I'm, I wanted to give you some of my tips for getting started, getting over that, that initial inertia, if you will. And one of the things that I like to do is have more than one painting going on at a time. And I'll usually uh, spend some time prepping a few boards or canvases or what, whatever and that way I have multiple paintings to work on and that way if you're it takes the pressure off one particular painting it doesn't have to be the most amazing painting ever because you can just move on to another one and I had been doing that uh, a week ago last couple of weeks and I finished I had three paintings going at once and I finished two of them and I'm pretty happy with them. And then, so I was left with this one right here, and all of the focus came on this particular painting. And I've overdone it. It's, uh, it looks pretty garish right now, and it's the only thing I have currently in production, uh, if you will. So that, that was part of why I was feeling stuck. Uh, I was also feeling a little stuck because I thought, oh, I should make a video about feeling stuck. And that was keeping me from coming out to the studio and doing some painting. It's like, oh, I gotta set up the camera, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta comb my hair, um, you know, that sort of thing. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this for now. Not get rid of it, but I'm gonna set it aside. It's looking pretty ugly, and I'm just gonna get my mojo back, get my groove back. So I have, um, I've prepped some surfaces. Uh, I have uh, one surface I really like to work on lately is uh, plywood board. And I've sanded it and uh, I've uh, gessoed it. And uh, so now I have these boards and they're pristine white, right? And uh, that can be a little intimidating in itself. So you just got to mark them up. So uh, I tend to, you know, when you start painting abstract work, it's totally okay to put something down that the world will never see. Like you, you, you see paint, painters do these underpaintings and they have, um, uh, you know, they'll spend a lot of time and then it gets completely covered up by stuff and by other stuff. And that's okay. And it's not a waste of paint because what's happening is when you put something down, you respond to it, and it's that response to what is there um, that develops the painting. And when it's blank like this, there's nothing to respond to. So you gotta start somewhere. You gotta make a mark. Let's see, what can I make a mark with? Oh, I got a pencil. Um, let me get a Stabilo Woody here. It's just a big old chunky, um, uh, what do you call it, um, colored pencil. Uh, it's chunky for, for kids, you know, it's made for small kids. Let's mark that up. Oof, already. It's like, yeah, I just ruined my nice, beautiful, white square. But that's okay. And I'm not quite scribbling. You may differ, but I, I'm, I don't feel like I'm quite scribbling. What I'm doing is I'm making little local areas of interest. These are kind of cool. You can actually get them wet and get some little drops there because they're kind of another water soluble. Okay, and so I'm gonna slap some black paint down now. Because I'm going to start in black and white. Gives me some structure. And notice I'm putting the paint in areas that I've already marked uh, by it with the pencil. So I'm, I'm, I'm it, the pencil, became sort of a structure and I'm using that structure to expand, add some texture, add some you know, bolder moves there. I don't know, do I want to connect those? 
not yet. And like this. It'll we'll connect up here like that. Okay. Just a bunch of lines from. Now I'm gonna scrape into it a little bit. Just, oops, probably pretty loud. I could get the utility knife out, but you know, palette knife works just as well. And let's get that wet there and get some more splops. That's an artistic technical term, splops. And uh, so we're getting we're getting some texture there already. I mean, you know, it's it's, it's doing something. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get some white. So I'm working in black and white, and I'm going to put the white paint in well in the areas where it's white right now. What I want is I want paint everywhere though. I don't want really at, at the end of things. I don't want any gesso showing through. And ultimately, I'm going to be working with the edges of where the white hits the black. That's where the interesting stuff is going to happen. So I'm going to just put some glops of white paint down. Sorry for all these technical terms I'm using here. Um, I'm going to put some glops down, and I'm going to get a brush. Break out a brush, right? Now, so the, the white is going to become gray as it hits the black. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread the white out and try and keep it away from the black as, as long as possible and then ultimately start moving in with the edges there. So let's start here. All right, so moving the white paint around. Can't really tell. Oh, picking up a little bit of the black there. I'm going to pick up more here because of the splatters that I've moved around, thrown around. Okay, but trying to keep it mostly white as long as possible. All right, that's as long as we can do. Now we gotta, we gotta kind of get in there a little bit more. We're gonna go up against the edges here. I'm gonna engage with some grays and all that. And notice how the pencil marks, those big old chunky pencil marks, they go away. I like how there's a sort of grid-like pattern here appearing, and this appears on these boards because when I paint the, when I put the gesso on, I do three coats. You know, one that way, one that way, and then one that way. And then it makes this lattice work kind of texture, which can be really cool. You can see it sort of there. And it's gonna come through more when I start scraping. Okay, my brush is, a, brush is a little bit gray now. All right, so I'm gonna start scraping, but I'm gonna be start, I'm gonna scrape at the edges of where the white is hitting the black like this. That's just gonna make that edge more complex. And it's gonna, make the the white and the black interact more. This is just a really overused utility knife here. And I'm gonna put some scrapes. See, I can just get the edge and then I just dive right in. Okay, so I can also dip in my brush in there and uh, see if I can get some white splatters. Well, like, it's pretty faint, but another, uh, uh, another texture I can add there. This is a bit too brushy. It looks like brush marks. So I'm gonna just put, put some lines through it there. And I'm trying to follow the curves to some degree of the structure I have going on there already. All right, I got some really chunky. Yeah, it's so dirty, isn't it? Uh, let's see. One thing, if you have to wipe something off, try and do it in strokes that go the same direction, like I'm doing here, because then you can you can get some uh, an effect that maybe you know you wouldn't get if you were just trying to scrub it off there. And again, all of this stuff is going to be covered up. I'm just uh, looking to make sure there's no giant globs of paint. Well, there's a few of them. I want texture though, right? Here's one. And I'm gonna move that off the edge there. Okay, so I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit and I'm gonna move on to the next one. Like I said, I have three of these boards here. Let's see, this time I'm gonna get this a little wet. Just a little bit of water and it's it's just uh, you know the brush cleaning water it doesn't matter and we're gonna start with black again I'm gonna I'm not gonna use a pencil this time just to shake things up a little bit and see what I do what I can come up here 
come up with here. Just trying to place it in different spots. And this is wet, so it's going to smear a little differently. All right. Almost looks like Payne's gray rather than black. Did I grab the wrong one? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. That other one was paint spray too. This... Okay, so you can see, I don't know if you can see it in the camera there, but there's a little bit of blue tint there because it's paint gray rather than black. It's interesting. But again, it doesn't matter because we're just making marks. You can see that grid pattern coming through there from the brush strokes. Say. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing again with white. Moving the white paint around, keeping it away from the black so my brush is clean until I go as far as I can and then we start intermingling a little bit. And when I do that, I try and keep it close to the black or Payne's gray as it turns out. I'm putting stuff on and then I'm scraping it off. So these brush marks here where I'm mixing the white and the Payne's gray look pretty stupid, um, but that's okay. I don't care. I'm gonna get my utility knife out and add some texture there. I usually we'll scrape from the, the light into the dark. That way it doesn't just smear everything. Not always though. All right, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna grab that, um, that woody pencil and I'm going to start in the black and just cut over the white a little bit, just to break things up a little bit. And it, it breaks up the big uh, areas of uh, white and it also sort of ties things together. And again, this is all going to get covered up, or most of it. But this will, this will inform my next, um, next wave of painting as I respond to this. As I start to see shapes that I want to keep and ones that I want to bring forward and ones that I want to get rid of. Um, some little white splatters, fairly visible. And just pulling those to the edges there because otherwise it has this sort of vignette or border, which I don't know, not keen on. All right, we got one more. And the idea is just to get these started, just get stuff down. And the thing with board as well, and I mean, this is true for canvas as well, but with boards especially, you can just keep putting paint on them. At no point do you have to say to yourself, oh, I've ruined it, this is no good, I'm gonna throw it out. You just put more paint on. You just keep, it, the painting is never a mistake or wrong. It's just not finished yet. I'm going to, I mean, you can, you can make marks with all sorts of stuff. This is a China marker here. Uh, it's a little bit more waterproof than the Stabilo, Stabilo or Stabilo, Woody. And so when I'm making these marks here, I am creating chaos, chaotic marks, trying to make marks that I wouldn't have created had I meant it. Um, so I'm looking for that randomness, but it's it's randomness with some thinking involved too. I'm looking at, see now I have something to work with, even though they're just little scribbles, right? That nobody will ever see, except you. All right, actually gonna use black paint this time. And I'm gonna use these little nodes that I've started I'm gonna go up here this time. <laughs> Not gonna, I, I like that distribution better. And you know what, maybe I'll use a paintbrush this time. Just keep things flowing and different. I'm sort of following the lines, but not always like that. And I'm stepping back and going, okay, how's the distribution there? Is it kind of, you know, even, but still showing you know, levels of uh, local detail and local contrast, but I don't want it really off balance in any particular way. So I'm gonna put a little bit more paint down there. I 
definitely got some black spots there. Okay, so I'm gonna work these edges here like this. Just to, especially when I put paint on with brushes, I really wanna break up that the edge so that it doesn't look so, so, to, so that you're not looking at it and going, oh, paintbrush. There, that's fine, you know, it's just, it's just shapes. And maybe, I can go back to the first one now. Still a little wet. It might be time to throw a little bit of color in there because the color will also give me something to respond to. I'm gonna go with some yellow ochre. This is yellow ochre I mixed up a little. Again, I'm just putting it right on the board. And palette's just gonna be wasted today or at least for this session. And let's start there. And I'm just gonna, a couple of, I'm just gonna whoosh, like that. And maybe I'll do that one, okay? And I'm still keeping it attached to the black structure uh, rather than making it this new shape there. It's all, it's sort of accenting the, the black. Right there. Got a little bit of, you probably, I don't know if you can see it there, but get a little bit of yellow ochre there. Okay, so I'm gonna let this completely dry now. And I'm gonna do the same thing with uh, the other ones. This one though with the uh, Payne's Gray, um, maybe I'll throw some uh, burnt sienna. I'm really going for sort of landscapey colors here. And I'll just, I'll do the same thing here. Now, again, I'm putting these blobs of color near the structure I've already made. So that it is uh, adding nuance to the overall structure rather than going off and doing something crazy and new don't want to add to the composition just yet. So. And again, I'm breaking up some of the edges here just to give it a more organic feel. Now I'm looking at that. Let's turn this around here like so. So these things, these three, I mean, that's nice, but they're sort of shifted this way. So I'm just going to put a little dot of color. It wasn't little, was it? Um, down there. Never run it off the edge like that. Okay, just balances off. Now I feel like I want to put one up there. But again, this is not, this is just getting something to respond to. This one is sort of bugging me. Um, Okay, I'm gonna make, okay, yay, I'm gonna use the palette. I'm gonna make green-ish by taking my yellow ochre and putting a little bit of black in it. Um, you can't make dark yellow, right? You, you start making black and mix, mixing black into it and it kind of turns into green. Well, I'm gonna use that to my advantage. I'm just gonna use the black that's already on here on the palette knife. This gives me a little different color to work with. And again, I'm just putting little splotches down there. See how it's a green. Um, I find that when I use green paint, I use too much of it. And then I just have this awful mess of, of green here. So I try and be judicious with my green, especially starting out. So there, we just have a little bit of color. Already, I like this one better. This one, this one, I liked the least of those. I think because the the black paint, I don't know, looks like I don't know letters or characters or something like that, and I didn't want that. Um, but those little hints of green and all that. Okay, so I'm gonna let all three of these dry, and I got started by just throwing stuff down. That's all you gotta do. The worst thing you can have is a blank canvas, and the way to solve that is just to put anything on it. 
it's it's totally okay to get a canvas or your work surface and just put put a couple marks on it and then set it aside because you've done something you've started right then you have something to respond to so it's all about getting something down responding to it letting it sit for a while responding to it again and basically you're just keep responding to what you did in the past until you go hey you know what i don't need to add anything else we are not at that stage yet for these i hope that was helpful thank you for watching and uh, if you're not a subscriber already it would really help me to click that subscribe button and that like button you know the drill it's youtube right thanks very much for watching